in order for us to talk about that, we have to look at the strategies of Satan. Because the time is coming, says the Lord, that I will punish all those who are circumcised in body but not in spirit. Why did the Lord say that? You see, we are two parts of us, human beings. We have the spirit part that pulls us up into heaven ways, that thinks like the Father, that acts like the Father, that behaves like the Father, that inter intercedes like the Father. Then we have the dust part of us that pulls us down and exposes us to the lower part of life, which is called body, where our senses operate. So if you lean onto the emotional side of you, sometimes we commit a sin and that leads to guilt. God created us into his image and he breathed his spirit into us for us to represent him on earth. That was the purpose for us as human beings. We were supposed to represent God on earth, to reflect on his image and serve him. That's all. That was what he did for us. You see, by the time he created Adam, everything was done. Because the Bible said, he said, let there be and it was. But when it came to man, he says, let us create man into an image of me. He didn't say, let's create an image of an angel or the beast or the tree, or this. He says, like me. So the purpose was, whatever was in heaven, we were supposed to also reflect on him. Yes. So by the time Adam was created, there was already job made for him, home made for him, wife made for him. Adam didn't need to go and ask God, God, where am I going to have for tea? Because God has already provided it. Yes. That is the God we said. Before he goes, he has already given you your home. He has already provided you what you will end up to be. Yeah. But let's look at the strategies of Satan, how he pushes us away from what is glory. In Genesis, the Bible said, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals that the Lord has made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the garden. We may eat trees in the garden. But God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree. That is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, said the serpent to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree, the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some, ate it, gave some to her husband and he ate it. The beginning of sin. You see, the devil don't mind you being at church today. The devil don't care at all when you are here today. In fact, you can be sitting here. This room would have been packed. He still does not care. Let me tell you the strategy of Satan, what he cares about. What he cares about is your personal relationship with God. What makes you say it is raining, but I'm going to get here. What makes you say, you know what? Everybody has got it, but I'm going to wait upon the Lord. Your, your obedience to the Lord is what the enemy, what devil always comes and, and attack. You see, Adam and Eve had a great relationship with God. The Bible says God used to come down and feast with them. They were obeying God and his rules. Since God created them, put them together to feast and multiply. The devil's strategy is to use something that is good to you. Because God said that when he made us, we were good. So that is the devil's strategy. To use something that is good. And then to create something that is bad out of it. So by doing that, you become guilty of God's punishment. i tell you a scenario. One day, I was driving down. And then all of a sudden, I saw the new latest model of our car. I said to myself, I must have this car. 
It's beautiful. I think I'll be it. S3. New type. Double S ops. I came home. I drove. I went to Tulsa. I came home. I saw my husband in the office. I locked the door. When the woman wants something, look at me, humbleness. Hi, honey. How is your day be? Is that all right? He said, can I ask you a question? Can you take two minutes of your work? He says, yes, woman. What is it? I said, hey, you would believe a car I saw today. You know, you can get it in orange color, your favorite. He said, what car? I said, that's three now. You know, the new type. He said to me, do we really need a new one? I said, ah, you don't want me to look good in a car. I started finding faults. Last time we took the car to the car. Last time I took the car for car wash and the person has I spread the paint. Now my car has got chicken pus. Last time, I'm saying all this to my husband. Silently he's listening. After I finished all that, he said, let's pray about it and ask God. That is his way to shut me these days. <laughs> so, me, I went to my room. I had a little banner. I knelt down. I was praying, I was praying. The prayer was not really, I fell asleep. While I was sleeping, then my spirit took me to a place where the Lord said, you came from Tulsa today and it was raining. You saw people on the bus, by the bus stop, and you drove past them. There was no rain on you because I protected you in a car. Did the car take you from point A to point B? I said, yes, Lord, it did. So why are you now pushing the fact that you can drive from point A to point B to go for something that you think is desirable, if said is desirable for the eye. Then I said to the Lord, hey, then the Lord led me to the book of James. He says, the reason we do not get, the reason we quarrel and fight and kill each other and murder each other is because we do not tune into the spirit of the Lord. So I just came straight to my husband. I said, you know what, honey? It's all about this guy's fine. <laughs> you see, that is what Satan does. Satan always references what our prophecies are. I said, I want to drive this car. I deserve to drive this car. Isn't it all right for me to drive a car? Prophecies. He introduces command and turn into a question. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? When God, when Satan wants to attract you, one of his strategies is he uses something that is very attractive. <laughs> Have you had a quarrel with your husband and the day you just step out, you see people going, woo, girl! And you feel like, should I? Should I? Should I? Should I? That is the way of Satan. You see, God makes you attractive because everything he does is good. Satan uses that and turns it into bad because when you agree, you don't know that you are disobeying God. For I am going for the things that are created, but I am not listening to the things that the one that created the things. So that is why Satan questions: Did God really say you should not eat from the tree? When Satan throws you such question. Did God really say that you should not get married? What happens to us is our prophecy is delayed. It has a significant impact in our life because God is a God of yes, not a God of doubt or question. So if God says wait and then Satan says, did God really say you should wait? This guy has asked you out. Come on, you are growing. You are doing. Then you're like, yeah, that's my prophecy. You know, I think I've met that one. Satan uses the ones that attract us most to commit us to fail so that we will be guilty of God's punishment. So, now, have you realized that you've talked about what you do have and forget about all the blessings you do not have? Have you found yourself talking about the things that you are supposed to appreciate, but you don't even see the blessings of God. All you talk about is, I gotta get this, I gotta get this. Exactly what I was doing. I want to take that car. I didn't mind where that money was coming from. The pressure in my marriage. My husband said, let's pray to God because he knows God will talk to me. 
He didn't say, okay, let's go, let's look for it. Yeah. Because after he had very thing that has been a blessing, taking me from point A to B, I would have said, ah, this guy is rubbish. Oh, see what he's causing now. It has now become a curse. Yeah. Then I feel guilty about it because I did not consult the king of kings, the Lord of Lords. And for that, I will be guilty for his punishment. Satan cannot make you sin because God has conquered him. What Satan does is to plant his thoughts in your mind for it to become your thoughts so that we start to believe in Satan's schemes. We start to believe that God's words cannot be trusted. The fasting, the praying, worshiping together on Sunday certainly now becomes a burden. Then we start to question God's perfect plan for our life. The book of Romans 3, 4, it says, Not at all, let God be true, and every man being a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail, when you judge. God is not a God that lies. So if he says you, he will give it to you. Amen. Wait upon him and he will give it to you. Amen. And in John, he says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. But there is no truth in him. When he lies, well, that is his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. So this means devil has got many children out there. So they come like sheep, but they are wolves. So you have to be very careful who you get attracted. Another strategy of Satan is to encourage us to do wrong. And what he says to us and what what he is recruiters, some friends, some relatives, they will say to you, you will die, keep on drinking. You will get a disease. But the Lord has taken our sicknesses and diseases. Does that not say that in the Bible? Don't worry about your dress. It's not bad. This is the trend. And you look great in it. So you feel yourself as a young woman and you say it's a trend. What trend are you following? Is it God's trend or human trend? They said to you, just be yourself. And what's wrong about you doing the things that you really want? And the things that makes you happy. Be yourself and be happy on all t-shirts and logo. Satan's little schemes out there that takes us away from the Father because now we are not operating with God. We are operating on our own desires. We become God himself. How can we become God? I tell you what. There was a banker and a farmer the banker went out to shoot ducks. And he shot one. And the duck fell onto the farmer's porch, the farmer's yard. So the banker went to retrieve his duck. When he got there to retrieve the duck, the farmer was standing next to the duck. So the banker said, Mr. Farmer, that's my duck. The farmer said, Mr. Banker, that ain't your duck. He says, I just shot that duck. He said, I'm sorry, can you read? No trespassing. This is my life. You can't come for this duck. The banker said, this is what we are going to do. We are going to start punching each other. I'm going to punch you first. If you fall down, that duck is mine. But if you punch me and I fall down, that duck is yours. The farmer said, oh, bring it on. Men, that's what we do. Yes. Human beings, that's what we do. So guess what? The farmer said, I go first. Mr. Banker said, I'm prepared. Give me your best shot. <laughs> so, the farmer gave it to Mr. Banker. Boom! Stand back a bit. Stand his rounds. He said, Oh, that hurts. But it's my turn. The farmer said, All right, Mr. Banker, you know what? I changed my mind. I don't want the duck anyway. You can have the duck. The banker said, what was all this for then? The farmer said, well, I just wanted to hurt you. That is Satan for most of us. Yes. 
It's not about the dark. It's not about you being here today. It's not nothing about your prophecies. It's all about your relationship with God and how He can help you so you will feel guilty of your life. We worship a listers because we want to be like God. We want to be like God. As he said to the, say, to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from the tree of good and evil, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So you believe that because you come to church on Sundays, because you fast and you pray, so you think you are better. No. It is the little, little things that you don't pay attention to. That's when the enemy comes in and takes a seat. And that's what overtakes your life and paralyzes you in sin and makes you guilty. But in Isaiah, the Bible says, how Satan tried to be like God. He wanted his independence. And God said, you know what? You got it. Take your independence. Let's see how you make it on earth. And it is exactly what is going on here today. We've been worshiping aliases, wearing their clothes, perfumes, shoes, dressing like them, queuing up for four days just to see a dead person in a casket, an empty casket. How sad is that? Wearing the brand, if I wear Bobby Bryant, LA Captain, I don't even know how to shoot a basketball. Does that make me Bobby? No. We wear that brand clothing. Does not make us like them. Every one of us is unique and cannot be mutated. Minister Essie can sing. I sing, but I don't have that. That is very unique. And Satan knows it. So Satan is saying, okay, I'm not going to attack your voice, but I'm going to attack something that will bring you down that you feel like not singing. That's what goes on. The schemes of Satan. Same as God. We want to be free and be like God, but we cannot because God created us to worship and obey Him. He is the I am, not what we want Him to be. We want to be like God, yet we don't need God in our lives. That is what is going on today. The truth of the knowledge is today's Google app, TikTok, WhatsApp, Facebook, iPhone. It's like God to many believers and non-believers. They actually press that before they say thank you, Jesus, when they get up in the morning. It's the first thing. Without going on the knees to pray, like, let's see what's going on. What did somebody say on TikTok? Everything is there for you to discover good and evil in this internet. But leave God out of the discovery. Become your own God and discover your own truth. The dilemma of many teenagers. You see, teenagers want to be like grown-ups. They want to be like their parents. They, that creates a conflict because nobody will give a knife to a two-year-old to say, play with. How can God give up a destiny to Satan to say, play with? But what do we do? They tell us, you're going to pay the rent, mom, huh? dad. You're going to feed me. You're going to buy me clothing. They get to a certain age and say, that clothing is not what I want. It's not my taste anymore. I want to go and do my own shop because I know my taste. And we give them the money and they go and they buy whatever they want to buy. I'll rubbish, whatever it is. And we see them and we can't say the word. They said to me, to us, accept my friends. Accept my attitude and desires. They don't want advice. They don't want the truth. They don't want discipline. And they tell you to be afraid of them because they can get you to serious trouble. If you dare try to teach your child a lesson, they know that Satan said, God, mine, mine, mine. For in this country, there's no word called discipline. Yet we pray to God. Isn't it the same in our lives? We don't want God's advice. We just hear that person said and we run. That person said and we chase. That person said and we go for it. What has God said? The motto is all about me and I know it all. I tried to speak a word in the house and I guess said, oh my God, God, we don't say it that way. She knows it all. 
Well, let's see how you make it on your own. With the knowledge you think you have with Google App and TikTok and Facebook and iPhone. Let's see how you make it on your own. This is what happens. So he has brought unwanted pregnancies. Destiny is being delayed. We did not choose to wait for the ways of the Lord, but we just jumped because we thought we were ready. And that brings guilt. Because when we look at our lives, we thought, we started with this person. Look where they are now. The word is pulling them, and God is watching. Satan was there, and the truth was in the middle. Adam and Eve was on the left, and God was on the right. And God was seeing if they would choose the creation over him, the creator. And they did choose over the creation. And God said, have it your way. We want independence. God said, you got it. Have it your way. The outcome is consequences. Which lead to death. Which is the separation. The regret. Our spirit has left the body. And the body has become inactive. To represent God's image on earth. The whole purpose of created us. We have become an inactive. We go for the designs that makes people even run away from us. God is supposed to be embraced, but people see us and go, Oh my God, what is she wearing? Oh, they just run away from you. This gift leads to many deaths. And for that, there's economic death, environmental death, relationship death, social death, all kinds of deaths. We are dying because we want independence. I want to be my own God and I will determine my own truth, wrong, and do it independently from God. I want all the glory, but I don't want to obey God in His in, 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 all, in all His teachings. That is what we say to ourselves. Well, let me tell you about that one. There's a man in the Bible everybody knows was Abraham. We, when we talk about Abraham, we just talk about Isaac, his son. But before Isaac, Abraham was in a very wealthy man. His father and mother, they had everything. Abraham wasn't born poor, you know. But God said to Abraham, leave it all behind and go to a land that there is nothing. Abraham obeyed, left everything, took his wife, and they went to a land where there was no milk and honey. He has left the milk and honey behind and is now scraping to make ends meet. That was the first call. God was testing me. Has God tested you yet? Have you been to a trial and you think, no, only God. The second was, after that, it took 50 years before God visited Abraham again. At this time, Abraham's servants and his nephew, Lot's servants, they were fighting about the green pasture for their animals. Lot said, I wanted all the good things in the servants. So God said to Abraham, Give it to him. Abraham obeyed again. Abraham gave everything to Lot. Lot took everything with him to the land of green pastures, Sodom and Gomorrah. When Lot was running away from, 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 from the, the ways of the Lord, from God's punishment, he did not come with a lamb. He did not come with a sheep. He certainly did not come with a boat. No, he did away. He came with only two daughters. Everything he had, it was gone. What do you think you're protecting? Is it yours? Obey and receive the glory of God in your life. Amen. You see, it does not matter about the status in your life, the perfume or clothing you wear, your educational background, the car you drive, your partner, nor the house you dwell in. Friends, you have God, the children you have, you can never be like God. He is a class by himself. And our duty to submit all our category to him if we don't regret guilt. Eve ate it and gave some to her husband, and he ate it too. Suddenly their eyes opened. For the first time in their lives, they can now see. Unfortunately, they did not see the evil part of the tree. 
They only saw potentially the good part of the tree, which is deception. Because they picked creation over the creator. Yes, this is the man you want to marry. But what is God saying about him? Are you going to listen to the creator? Or are you going to see the attractiveness of man and go with the creation? Satan's strategies that destroys our destinies in Christ. So why? The outcome of their action. Why did Adam and Eve pit creation of a creator? The outcome of their actions are now getting to be judged. They seek their own advices rather than the Lord's. If they say to you that drinking can lead to cancer or addiction or chasing after worldly desires can lead to many guilt and regrets, then perhaps we would have taken the advice of the prophecies, the advice of the prophets, the priests, the many pastors, the grandparents, the parents, and wait upon the Lord's goodness and revelation. Do not listen to Satan. Do not let Satan increase your physical appetite. For you to say, it was good at that time. It felt good at that time when I was doing it. Do not let Satan increase your emotional appetite. For you to say, it was desirable. You know, I needed it at that time. Do not let Satan increase your intellectual appetite. For you to think that education is the only way forward. I can really be wise and get a better job. So you sacrifice all the best thing in your life, family, and you chase after certain things that takes you away from the Lord. And you say to the Lord, you know you've given me six days for my own, one day for you, but even that one day you are giving me, Lord, it's the time for me to stay so I can't come to church. Do not let Satan increase your intellectual appetite. Do not allow human truth to rule in your house. God's truth is the truth. Whenever your truth conflicts the divine truth of God, you become ignorant. The woman thought that the tree was good and she ate it. She did not realize she was disobeying God. It has led to many divorces in our lives. Many premature Teenage, teenage pregnancies in our lives. Who advises you? And are you humble enough to listen to God's truth, his guidance, precepts, and ways? We can never be like God. That is fact. Respect all people. Trust me. Respect all people by all means. But do not turn them into idol. In Proverbs, the Bible says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. As believers, our biggest challenge is the inability to discern. We take whatever that is presented to us and assume we can play God with our future. In Hebrews, the Bible says, we have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who, live, who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not familiar or knowledgeable with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. How do you know that what, whatever that is going on is your desires? We put our children through certain situations and we say to them, what is it that you want to become when you grow up? And we lay down the job. We don't know the consequences of them paying tax until they drop it. We say to them, in my home, as my mother said to me, everybody goes to university, you cannot stay. I die. You will go to university. I don't blame her because at their generation, the opportunity was not there. So this opportunity, say, ah, uh ah, -uh, mm -mm. you can't live here, but Pepper, and say, you, 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 that, 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 that,
and you come back with 30,000 pounds in debt, and then you're like, oh, I want a house, I want this, I want this, and then you find yourself chasing after. You are always behind. You are never ahead. You are always behind. You are never ahead. And then by the time you get to 40, 45, you have already little ones that are following your footsteps. Following your footsteps. So you created generation of your needs and wants. What is God saying? James says, do not be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. You see, Satan has switched many parts of us. There was a man that went to Tesco to shop. And these days, I think Tesco, you can do your own scanning. So what he did was, if it is a, a, a tag on, on, on oil, he removes that tag for eight pounds, and then he puts it on bread for one pound fifty. I mean, a machine is a machine. All he does is beep, and you go. It's exactly what Satan has done to all of us. Most of us, I should say, pardon me. He has switched the tab. So you think you are a loaf of bread. You think you are not a loaf of bread at all. Don't let deception, don't let that lies, don't let the privilege of your soul. Satan knows how to trick his false children. He knows what will hurt you. So he goes after the things that will hurt you. And for that, you will say certain things that heaven will say, ah! Oh, you can say that. And because you have said it and written it down as I did before meeting Pastor Daniel, it takes shape and it only by the blood of Jesus Amen. that separates, that brings that curse for the end. You see, what we need is to ask for the Spirit of God to dwell in us so that we will be pulled upwards, not downwards. Please write these three things down. There are three plans to discover God's solution for living the free life from Satan's strategies. The first one is we have a good news. Jesus has died for us so we can be forgiven and not found guilty. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I stand before you now and acknowledge that I have sinned against you. I surrender and confess my faults to you now. I acknowledge my guilt. I acknowledge my guilt. And I ask you to forgive me. And I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. And give me joy. And give me joy. I come into your arms of love. I come into your arms of love. And I turn from my sins. And I turn from my sins. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The second one is to believe in God. If guilt moves you away from God, rely on his promises, principles, and prophecies by faith. Draw closer to God and fix your eyes on Jesus, not yourself or your regrets. Believe by faith and your feelings will change. Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, Jesus. I believe your sacrifice, I believe your sacrifice. is enough for my sins. I come to you now. I come to you now. And declare that I am acquitted. And declare that I am acquitted. I decide to forgive myself. I decide to forgive myself. And cast the guilt away from me. Cast the guilt away from me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then thirdly, silence the accuser. Silence the accuser. Remember, Satan does not have the power to separate you or I from God. He is trying to make you believe his lies so that you can become consumed with guilt and distance yourself from God. Just like Adam and Eve did after being deceived. Resist, resist the accuser by leaning onto Jesus Christ. Jesus died for your sins. You are forgiven. Christ is risen. You are declared righteous. Pray this prayer with me, please. Father, I thank you for forgiving me. Father, I thank you for forgiving me. And justifying me. And justifying me. You have laid my sins at the bottom of the sea. 
And your blood covers me. And your blood covers me. Jesus. Jesus. You pray for me. You pray for me. And in your name. And in your name. I refuse the accusations. I refuse the accusations. Of the enemy. Of the enemy. And drive him away from me. Drive him away from me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now say to your neighbor. I am free from guilt. I am free from guilt. I am made new in the Lord. I am made new in the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.